following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. It's gone even quieter. Even quieter. <laughs> really it far in the back now. Hands. I can't hear it at all. Hi, everybody. How are you doing um, today? Hi. Uh, bienvenue. Welcome. Hello. This is a... Hmm. Why not? Why not? Why not? You know, this is where we've got to pretend that we're not, we're not Nazis. We've got to, you know, we've got different accents on now. Got to get rid of that German voice quick. <laughs> the chat is already mad at me for my... Uh, for my for my politically correct applauding here, this is for people who are this is for who are not able bodied. Okay, so okay, calm, exactly. calm your tits. Okay, <laughs> How dare you call out our token member of the real BBC? I was about to say I, the host, but I'm not talk to up. Nina like that, Gary. <laughs> no, I came to I came on, I, say I, something I, worse. I was about to say something worse. <laughs> I'm shocked you didn't say BBC. I came to uh, to lend a bit of authenticity to the BBC label. <gasps> True. Wow. Can't deny that. Actually, yeah. the black checkbook. You got one. Okay. Oh, oh hey, wait. Guess what? There's oh, nothing wait. to talk about this week. <laughs> I'm talking Damn about up. my dick. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Hey! <hell. laughs> Whoa! <laughs> This is a family show. Two minutes please. into the show. Wow. Clift is already this. slapping it onto the fucking table. Holy I found this shit. in my mail and I wanted to, I wanted to show Clifton that it actually exists. This is my, my oh. official white privilege card. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Well, yes, this, this, card, card, oh, this, this card, card came in my mail today. A signed oh, yeah. Todd McFarlane Batman Year Two. That's pretty and cool. It, it was attached. To this, that is also Weep. very cool. Now that was sent to me by somebody who who put their real details on the letter, so I don't want to say the name because I don't want to dox them. Uh, but they did put their email on, and I will drop you an email, okay? Uh, and thank you so much for that because I've got one, but I don't have the Todd McFarlane autograph. This is the special one, so uh, I'm, I can put that into. Um, storage and then have this one out congratulations congratulations which is awesome um gary hello. hello i have a card that says this card grants its bearer happiness and success because it's color it's the color of your skin and not the choices you make that determine your abilities to be <laughs> amen uh, it sounds, wow. member, sounds pretty accurate. it goes it says member since birth good through death Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> card holder Scott awesome. Free. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's Scott Free. Where did you get that? Everything. It was it somebody sent it to me and it fell out of my I'm unpacking and like all of my mail was in a box and this was at the bottom of the box. I'm like, holy shit, I can't wait though whip this out. That's whoa. Funny. Whoa. Excuse no, me while I you do whip this out. Oh. oh I've got all kinds of wonderful comics and things to show you. Uh, while we uh, talk about how shitty that Thor trailer was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, we all loved I, it. What do you mean? I, I, without going into it right now, but somebody said on Twitter, as you already predicted something that happened in the fucking trailer, which we'll get to. Um, Clifton, let's just go across the line. Clifton, how you doing? 
you can't you contacted us today you just you would not happy about the Thor trailer one bit were you oh no i was not uh, i was not pleased uh, whatsoever with that trailer um i i have uh, some thoughts about it uh, and uh, and i look forward to uh, our our sophisticated discourse about it <laughs> yay <laughs> some might say ranting uh which is cool uh nina how you doing hi i'm good really happy to be here nice to meet you clifton it's, uh, it's a pleasure and uh i'm looking forward to a great show i've been called several things now because i'm hanging out with you guys like incel and she incel and she chud and chin cell she yeah, she, she said chud. she sells on the she show. Oh, that's good. That was I was like, what? <laughs> I don't she even chud. know what that is. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, um, I love all the guys calling us chud. Oh, I'm sorry. All the guys calling us chuds all have uh, fucking man buns and move. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in good company. Uh, I caught a black. Real BBC. <laughs> uh, yeah, them, they're big mad about. Uh, MCU, it's getting that's really starting to get to them. Uh, and Mola, our resident oh, Cthulhu demon, how you how doing? You, do you, how did you get through the intros within under 10 minutes? What is this? I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Starting on time <laughs> through the intros in 10 minutes. I guarantee you, it's because I has is like, I have 10,000 topics, we gotta get intros out of the fucking way. <laughs> so, I think we've yeah, just got 10,000 things to say about the Thor trailer. So uh, I was I was hanging out last night. I was doing my thing, and then and then Fringy was like, "Ooh, Thor trailer's out!" And I was like, "All right, let's give it a look. See, let's have a little look." And when we finished the trailer, I was like, All right, "I'd like to speak to Az." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, well, that'll be upcoming. So it's two thirty in the morning or something. <laughs> I know. And then all the texters, "Are you hello? <laughs> you up?" We could have done last night. We were kind of going off in our chat. So when when did I message you guys about it? It was pretty. Late, um, it? For me, it was like morning, like eight thirty oh. in the morning or something for me. Oh yeah, so it, it was probably around uh, maybe one or two in the morning for me. Too. It was two. Yeah, I was awake. Uh, oh no, we... it was it was. Uh... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was it was uh, seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There so about go. two, two a.m. You know that that that's how moved I was by the trailer. I just I was like, can you believe this fucking bullshit? So fucking bullshit. Fucking, just fucking bullshit. It's God, you guys are always so sexist. Sexy. I'm sexist against against bad movies. We're always so sexy. Yeah, <laughs> sexy. He's close. Sec We're also sexy. That's true. Mm -hmm. I I'm just amazed. I mean, a trailer is not indicative of the final film. Okay, disclaimer. Uh, I'm just amazed that they managed to cram so many cock moments in that trailer for Thor. Mm. Should we should we watch it? I'll ruin uh, your mythos in a minute, baby. Yeah. I'll ruin it. We, we, we can watch it, right? Because Disney let us do that. We? Yeah, yeah, yes, Disney do be. not. Uh, they Disney do not, not um, do the thing. So thank you, Disney. Uh, let's, let's bring it up. Thor, <laughs> Love and Thunder trailer, I've baby. I've never let's heard anyone thank Disney before. That's... I was about to say, that's the one thing you can thank Disney for. <laughs> Fuck you for being a bunch of creepy groomers, but thanks for not hitting us on the trailer. Fuck you yeah. for being a groomer. Presumably they don't hit people because they've they've gathered that they can be good for promotion. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Not from not from us, but <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. I mean, it's actually a smart move. Like Warner Brothers is America's dumbest company. That's why they hit people. So let's just play it all the way through without comment, and then we'll go back to the beginning. And then we'll systematically go through it. Okay? And then when you want it to stop, just say stop and uh, release your volley of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just, folks, let's just go through for the people in the chat yeah, without as, uh, we'll any, as any as interruptions. Without <laughs> yeah, without, yeah, without somebody <laughs> just losing this shit. <laughs> Kids, get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the Space Viking. Thor Odinson. Stop. He was no ordinary man. Stop. Stop. <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait. No, wait. he said once. We're going you guys all the way through. Oh, without going through. 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 Then we're going to go back to the beginning, and then then you can then you can put your objections in. <laughs> this, this is for the this is for the uh, the chat, so they can just go through the whole trailer, fine, and then we'll then we'll go. Fine, through. fine. It's for the chat. It's for this is for the chat. Kids. 
get the popcorn out. Let me tell you the story of the space Viking, Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. He went from dead bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Not a title! Jane? That's looking at Gary, by the way. Next girlfriend. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months, and six Whoa. days. Am I uh, sensing feelings? You don't have any feelings. Well, you're right. The only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is my vow. All gods will die. I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. It's just my first bad guy. You never forget your first. The other gods have killed. Because I have something worth fighting for. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flick! Oh! You flick too hard, damn it! <laughs> Shall we help him? And eventually, grape. If it was a woman, it would be fucking grape, according to. Ah, okay. Yep. Now we're going to. Ah! Wait, okay. Well, why do you think they said why they said grape at the end? Grape. Do you think yeah. it was an accident? Uh, yeah, no. I was going to ask that. Do you guys think that was an accident? Because no. I think there's absolutely a great connotation not. to that. I don't. No, no. It's they just a. It's a grape. That to him. It's just a grape. No, it's not. They think about stuff a lot. It's just a grape. Sure. And and Arnold was just a draper. Uh, in Terminator Dark Fate. Wow. A film I will never see. Yeah, I've never seen it. <laughs> That's your loss, huh? Your loss. Yeah, I somehow think I'm okay. Uh, oh, all right, let's, there's let's, so much let's... wrong with that. There's so much fucking wrong with this. Mm. Okay, hey, do, do you want to take turns or do you want to systematically go through? Jane Foster, uh, you know, took a breath, like, in the comic book. So they did that in the comic book. Yeah, she moved her right arm in the comic book. But in the context of what led up to, you know, she had cancer, which they might bring in from Dark World. She's been missing for fucking years. All of a sudden she pops up. She's an important character. Where did we just see a movie with that happen? A Dr. Doc, Doc, Strange. It's the same shit. Oh, God. So it's we so start on the set of The Lion King. Is that what's going on? No, he's finding himself. Uh, he's finding himself time. again. For the fourth film in a row. Sure. Because apparently, um, now that the universe has been saved, he doesn't know how, and he's not king of Asgard because he gave it to a, well, a whammon. I already MCU. hate the fact that we intro on Thor stopped saving the world after he did it enough times. Like, excuse me? What? Wait, what? The Dark Knight, like... they Dark Knight rose him. What, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I don't remember that story. Do you guys? No. He walked away. Uh, Not in the MCU. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, they, yeah. they, they, they would do that. Let me tell you the story of the space Viking. Oh, my God. I'm so over Taika Watiti and his weird stone fucking creature thing. I fucking hate yeah, that. Yeah, all I, all I hear is Taika Waititi now. And... Uh, him snogging his girlfriend and uh and King Kang Valkyrie, Valkyrie together. <laughs> Kang Valkyrie together. So this is this all this bit here is like the first five minutes of the film. Because the with the with the guardians here, you know, you can see uh Groot. Old Star Lord down there, and you can see Nebula there and Groot's over here. And look, he threw his coke on this alien dude. Isn't that funny? 
Um, so this is just going to be like a, like the first five minutes of the film as he's narrating how he left the Guardians of the Galaxy, left yeah. fighting, and then just sat by a tree finding himself. He's Which is already, like, th to be fair, that's, that's the part of the film I would actually want more of, is him fighting to save people with the Guardians. That sounds like fun, but yeah. we're not yeah. going to get that for even a minute, probably. No. We're going to get, we're going to get the... The little bit with Chris uh, Pratt, and then uh, he's gonna he's gonna walk away and uh, sit on a tree, getting all zen. Do you think it's that's afterward? I think this is before. This is like when he's getting fit, so he becomes all zen while he like works out, and then he's like <clears throat> meditating. And I think I um, no, I think he it starts off with him losing his weight mm. then he's with the guardians then he uh you'll get you into know. fights with them and then you'll gradually realize man you know what i'm kind of done doing fights this is probably <laughs> the reveal of his god bod yeah that's why he I, throws I think the so. cloak off that's yeah. the reveal of his god bod again. yeah there's that shot in the um in the first teaser i think where the guardians go to fight someone and he just decides ah oh, fuck it and walks off yeah so that's gonna happen soon after this Yes. And then he's going well, to be encouraged. So, uh, the imagery here is from Eric Masterson. Uh, and that's basically, it's, mm, what's the best way to describe it? It's like a knockoff Thor. It's a derivative Thor. It's not Donald Blake. And then Donald Blake disappeared. Then Eric, Eric Masterson comes in. So they have our main character looking like a derivative character. Hmm. So if you're a comic fan, you're like, okay, that's like Batman uh dressing up as Azrael, like Bruce Wayne dressing up as Azrael in the beginning Ugh. of his own film. And uh it, it's 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 that's part of the symbolism because the mighty Thor, the true Thor, is now Jane Foster in his movie. Yeah, because But they say that. Without jumping too much ahead, the bit that I got right is I said I bet there's a bit where he tries to lift Mjolnir and he can't. Because he's not worthy, but Jane Thor just walks past Jane Thor. Jane Thor just walks past and picks it up. And th there was that bit in the in the trailer well, where Mjolnir was coming to him, and he reached, but then it got zapped back to, and and yeah, the that's, that, Thor. that that harkens back to the unworthy Thor. Yeah, real Thor. Yeah, oh, that's that's that the part. Yeah, that that's the part that uh, that pissed me off initially because you know I, I would just like to see a Thor film where Thor is not continually undermined in some way. Thank you. The thing that I love, the thing that I love about, and I didn't expect to like uh, the Thor comics that much, um, but I, I, got, I really got into reading them. And ironically, uh, my uh, journey with Thor began with Jason Aaron's God Butcher uh, run, the first part of it. And there's a great scene where, uh, like a great panel where he, he talks about how he wakes up every morning and just lifts Molnir just to make sure that he's still worthy. And uh -huh. it's a nice uh, revealing a uh, bit of vulnerability and it speaks a lot about his virtue because uh, at the end of the day he's a warrior for his people and he 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 cares about protecting them but he also cares about being being worthy and it's like you know it, and if you have someone else coming in there and if, if everyone can pick up the damn hammer then who gives a fuck you know what i yeah. mean mm -hmm. and and then again like you said before it's like and there's only one thor it's thor <laughs> There's no, you know, there's no Jane Foster Thor. It's not a, it's not a title as it was said before. It's, it, it, there's only one Thor, you know, and I, I think, and I wonder if, if they've, you know, I mean, I, I was really, really upset by the way they treated him in Endgame where they just completely emasculated mm. him and, you know, and turned so him into bad. this sort of pudgy piece of shit. And it's just like, look, you know, I, again, I go, I go back to the Jason Aaron uh, um, run where, you know, the, at the beginning, you know, he's fighting monsters and he's betting the women and, you know, he's brave and he's and he's strong. Like, you know, it's like so between him and the Hulk, these big sort of aggressive uh, uh, essences, they had to they had to find some way to destroy both of them. And, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and it was very obvious to me. And in um, here, you know, and I, and I and I feel like you know, I just want to see Thor being being taken seriously and given like a nice fantasy um, you know, film, and you know, so we can see the, this mighty warrior. And you know, he's not brilliant like Peter Parker or Tony Stark, but he's brave. He can be reckless, but yes. he's you know, his heart is always in the right place, and he's tenacious, and he's and, you know, he's a fighter. That's what I want to see. You know, I don't want to see, um, I don't want to see silly. And I love Chris Hemsworth. You know, I think he brings a lot of. Um, you know, a lot of humor to 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 the to the role, but it's just like, yeah, but 
you know, I don't want to see silly Thor. I want to see, I want to see the mighty Thor. That's my thing. Yeah, because they, well, they also hint in this trailer that he's, a vir well, he was a virgin before Jane. Because he's like, you never forget your first time. Well, maybe, I mean, it could be they're referring to him falling in love for the first There's time. No but way again, it goes virgin. back to that thing. And th well, that's what I'm saying. He's years old. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> but that's, yeah. it. that's it, though. Like, he kind of hints, he kind of hints that, it, that it is, but he can't be. Yeah, that wouldn't make There's any no sense. way it is. There's no way it is. And, the, well, and again, well, you know, I, it can't be in the MCU. It absolutely. Yeah. Right. I mean, don't think you don't sell these guys short. They are that. I mean, Victoria Alonso is so driving this ship right now. You can fucking tell. And uh, it, it, like, listen, it, it's obvious to you. It's obvious to everybody. That's why the clapbacks we're getting are so much harder from fewer people because the MCU is really catching on. People are going, oh, fuck, they are doing this. They just hate masculinity. They are, they are drowning in their own Kool-Aid ODN on their own farts. They really believe that any masculinity is toxic masculinity. And, and the reason, you know, they always hit us with, why are you so scared of women? It's like, bruh, um, no, why are you so scared of men? Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. they're all rapists. That's why. Well, okay. All right. See, that's, that's the, the mentality we're dealing with. And I say uh, the, and, the, the and women the have written poorly. That's the problem. It's not the women. It's the, the writing of the women. What I was, what I was yeah. going to say is, like, and, and the irony of it is, it, is that if you have to, uh, if you have to weaken, if you have, if you have to nerf your male characters to such an extent, just to, just to help the female characters stand out, that, that, that speaks volumes about how you really feel about the female characters stand, yes. their, their ability to, their ability to stand on their own. Um, you know, and, and the weird thing about it is that, you know, I'm thinking of um, the Beta Ray Bill saga and like one of the awesome scenes from that comic is fucking, uh, was it Lady Sif? Who's uh, who's like f f slaying space demons? You know what I mean? Like I'm like, dude, this is awesome. This is awesome. We, there's, we, there's characters like that that you could use and like and have a strong female character, so to speak. But they, I don't, you know, they, they just all I the don't women know why they keep ignoring them. When the MCU started, I, there's not a one I didn't like. I liked them all. Maria Hill. They actually softened her up big time from the comics. Gamora, Nebula, Lady Sif, like Lady Sif. One. Mm. Do you remember when Black Widow tore through like twenty gods in Iron Man Two? I don't remember everyone being upset about that. It's because like, no, well, she's no one cared because it was gonna... cleverly done and it juxtaposed yeah. uh, her, uh, Happy just fighting with one guy and using everything that he had to take him uh -huh. out while she was doing all these great little maneuvers to take out all the other guys. So by the time she finished, and Happy knocked his guy out, and he was like. I got him, and it's like there's just oh. this corridor full of fucking unconscious dudes. It was good. When, it when was she awesome. hits the last guy with pepper spray, that's fucking yeah. brilliant, man. That's, that's so good. And that's it's funny cool because they, right. they, they, they keep going back to this well of, uh, you know, you hate strong female characters. And it's like, dude, no, we don't. Because I mean, just look mm -hmm. empirically. And I kept saying, it, even, even as Wonder Woman was like, you know, was making all of this money. <laughs> they're mm. just saying, well, why do, you, why do you all hate women so much? You know, I mean, there's been strong female characters. So, I mean, I, I fucking hate that, that phrase. We, we Since, don't... you know, for hundreds of years yeah. of literature, no yeah. one cares. Just make, a... just make good characters, please. You're, you're, you're stating that there's weak female characters out there. So you're, you're I mean, like, that, that's such a, it's so fucking stupid. If you yeah. think a strong female character is a chick in her pajamas with rubber fucking arms on, in front of a green screen, then, you know, get outside. Go meet a woman. Ooh. Mm. You know what's funny about Wonder Woman, the first hey, women, I think. I just bought this to shout at it. <laughs> when, uh, when, when Wonder Woman uh, 2017, right? When that came out, it, like, Marvel got caught with their pants down hardcore because they were yeah. like, wait yeah. a minute, women can make money too? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Know, right? Well, maybe we should have put a Black Widow oh. movie out a while ago. They should it, have. It was all Ike Perlmutter's fault, remember? Although Ike Perlmutter was developing a Black Widow film before Kevin Feige was with the MCU. Long before, with Wesley Snipes. So, wow. that's bullshit. But now they're not even having a, a, a solo female film because they don't even trust Ms. Marvel to stand alone on her own. So now they have to stick her with Monica Rambeau and Ms. Marvel and maybe more. Uh, yeah. because, and that's that's the... And even the Marvel way now is ensemble movie ensemble movie ensemble movie because i don't think they have the confidence in quite a lot of their characters to be able to carry movies or stand alone in movies well also um, I, this is I, sorry go on. oh sorry man I, I, I think i think part of the issue too at least from my perspective is that a lot of marvel's um 
most popular uh, female characters are in the X Men. <laughs> yeah. So, like, they, yeah. They, yeah. But they, which they don't have, ac which they didn't have access to before. So they're they're kind of scraping the bottom of, of the barrel, trying to find somebody. But you know, it kind of I, I alluded to this last time I was on FNT, which is that you know the 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 studio wants to go all all woke, so to speak. And so they so when they cast Captain Marvel, they could have used the Monica Rambeau from you know from the eighties, and you know given given a shot to some you know sassy black actress or something. Uh, and the one and, with the giant fro and like. The, the yeah, awesome. man, that, yeah. that could that could have that could have been a riot, and, yeah. uh, and, and we would have loved in it. But Doctor instead, Strange. but instead, instead they cast, you know, well, we all know who they cast, and mm -hmm. you know, it's just yeah, if Should you really want to be woke, Spider then why? Then not now you want to speak up for black women? Okay, well, you could have done it, and but yet you, instead you went with um, you know the same old, same old. So it's mm -hmm. just you know, it's just they they, they keep they, crossing themselves and contradicting themselves. I, in Doctor Strange too, they they monocramboed. Uh, Ms. Marvel. They put uh, Lasagna Lynch as uh, yeah. as Ms. Marvel, which I assume she was playing Monica Rambo. Yes. Uh, so. Version. Uh, so they went with it in a in a separate universe, and then had her killed by uh, Brie Larson's statue falling on top of her. Yeah, and and going back to what you were saying, Clifton, British. that's how I feel about. A Thor too, like I feel like, because in the past like five movies or whatever, we just we just keep seeing the decline of this man, and it's like at first it was like, okay, like here's like a couple of jokes here and there, and I was okay, like it was kind of humorous. You're like ha ha ha, and then like it's like now like five movies later, and it's he's just like the butt of every joke, and I'm just sick of seeing Thor be this pathetic loser that's just continuously being made fun of all the time. It's like can we just. Can I have like a powerful Thor god? Look that at him! I, I wanna look, look at this guy. Look how I fucking know. chiseled fucking this dude is. Yeah. He's beautiful. He's just he's fresh off <laughs> filming his Hulk Hogan movie. He's ripped to absolute fuck. Women fucking love man. him. Dudes want to fucking be him. Exactly. Uh, Extraction did incredibly uh, because movie. he's the featured star, and then they surround him with with lesser characters that they they want to. Uh, lift up and they lower him like Clifton said instead of raising your other characters to that level they mm -hmm. can't do it so they have to lower Thor to the level of the other the other characters uh and it just it makes a mockery of it I'm sure Chris Hemsworth is just like I don't give a fuck I'm getting paid a fortune do what you you, you fucking want uh but but ultimately yeah I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him again after this film you know, there's Possible. also another another element that, that I'm thinking of as well, where, you know, the, uh, from the comics, there's a lot of fraternal and paternal conflict um, in, in Thor. You know, he's he's dealing with father issues. He's dealing with his brother. And mm -hmm. um, again, you can't if, if you're going to go into the MCU, I mean, they've already I mean, we see we saw what they did to Loki. They killed Odin. Oh. Um, so now so now no, what so that that element that could be that, that could be. Um, such an interesting story thread is also, I mean, they've, they've gotten rid of it because they need to empower, falsely empower uh, these, these female characters. And really it's insulting. I mean, I, I, you know, I may disagree with uh, Natalie Portman's personal politics, but I like her as an actress. She's had a long career. You know, she knows what she's doing. It's an insult mm -hmm. to her as well. You know, she, I mean, I think she deserves better uh, as, as a performer, but uh, you know, she's riding the wave anyway. So, you know, th this is her, this is her moment. <laughs> All she cares about him is money, Clifton. That's why she showed up. She was funny in the first movie. Yeah. Like yeah. she was charming and funny. Uh, it got like, it, you know. Women aren't here to be charming uh, and funny for you, Gary. Uh, they're going, they, <laughs> Whoa, they're gonna forget. They, they're gonna tuck it away into their history that if you watch that film again, she swoons after him quite a bit. Like all Which the is so, like th this is why I don't it's like so this fucking trailer. Normal. When Chris Hemsworth walking around, like if all these chicks are gonna, gonna try and forget is. that. She's yeah. waiting. No, she's not interested anymore. Dude, she's yeah. busy saving the world. He's the simp, okay? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Like the real Jane Foster would be like waiting for him and being like so happy to see him because she would be like, Oh my god, it's been so long. Let, yeah. Like, where have no. you been? Like, it's like, He's no. Like, What's it been like three or four years? Yeah, and like uh, and what is this? Uh, like the CW? Months, what kind of fucking days. dialogue is that? Like, what's it been like it's three the or five years? It's it's well they're getting writers at, at pretty much at that level like none of the writers have any fucking experience anymore. No, so yeah, it's CW. It's it's full on CW. The costumes are getting horrid. Um, I like I like. Look at this. This costume's good. Comic. This costume's great. Yeah, I like this costume. Yeah, but it won't uh, be there for long. Not no. this, this costume is really good, but that stupid fucking helmet looks like shit. Yes. And I, li I like oh, yeah. it to throw Kirby throwback, and I th I think that's one of the things uh, Taika Waititi did good. 
yeah. in Ragnarok was some of the costuming was fucking rad because it was Kirby stuff. But then the the helmet, I mean, it doesn't even look like he's fucking actually wearing it. I don't even know anymore, right? But it looks. But this is so a different bad. scene though because he's wearing a yes, different armor. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. They, they so cut these it are two different parts trailer. of the film. This is a di- yes, yeah. This obviously. is yes because <laughs> he's wearing two different costumes, two different armors. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you never even know these days. It could be that this armor doesn't even exist in the film, but it's all CG or some shit for the trailer. Like, you never know what's real anymore. Really. Helmet, dude. I mean, like, put on his proper helmet. Like the uh, one from Thor, uh, the first Thor movie's fine. Uh, yeah, so it was. Yeah. Helmet and what is? Oh. That? I mean, wow. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck happened when they made that. Like. No, That's what I asked about it. It's like, first of all, that left eye looks like you can't even see. I'm 100% the, like, sure that is a CGI helmet as well. Like, bro, how does, how, does your helmet, how does your helmet? How does your helmet have a lazy eye? Like, how, why did they build that into the design? That doesn't that make is, any sense. That would be terrible in a fight. Uh, you, like, you can't you, even you see. Should, <laughs> you should see some of the stuff Natalie Portman's arms are doing. Like, oh yeah. my god, yes. She got a cancerous growth on the back of one scene where the front of her arm doesn't come up i love i just love owning all the people who are like she totally worked out fucking dally portman you go girl yeah uh, yeah they couldn't even get get it right in the fucking trailer well, we'll show and again you. and again i think about gal gadot who when she was initially cast i was like you know, I want I wanted someone who was like built like a tank. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you know, who was this wispy? One? But then I watched um, and I didn't see Wonder Woman, but I did see I did watch the Justice League, and then I forgot about it promptly afterward. But what I do remember is that uh, you know I was like, she is so convincing in her action scenes, at least to me, and 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 she can do it. But she's a but she's not huge, and so you don't have to be this super huge ripped woman. I mean, uh, 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 you know, I mean, some women are doing stuff too, but you know, Natalie Portman, she was she was uh, believable in a lot of her stuff as well. So you know, we don't need to see like it. It, it kind of continues the uh, the comic book trend of they're they're replacing these uh, these male characters with these uh, uh, these uh, knockoff these knockoff males who are just who are we're supposed to accept as women, but they they just try to masculinize them a whole well- lot. I think Clifton, part of that is like the cultural war that we're at right now. And I I think that part of the reason for that is that they're scared of strong males because they're actually scared of like this dissent among, you know, the plebes and strong men can stand up and do things like, you know, lead rebellions and certain things like that. So they they want to quash like culturally speaking, they want to quash anything that has to do with like the male rising up and being like, hey, there's something going on here we need to like actually like that that masculine energy that will will lead people through that right they don't want any of that so that's why they're doing all this in my opinion i think that has a lot to do with the culture war as well and i think in addition i think in addition to that just just really quickly as just i think in addition to that um just piggybacking off of you nina is that they are they're also afraid of femininity and yeah. they, they they don't whatever they whatever anything that that might strike someone as quote unquote traditionally feminine um they they see as somehow oppressive or sexist so they mm-hmm. they can't they can't show any of those kinds of shades of of femininity i mean i keep thinking of um of Carmen, it's the you know the but the character the opera is based on. It, yes. You know, it's it's a novel from the 1800s, but everyone should read it. It's because she's such an exciting character. She uses her sexuality to get what she wants. She's violent. She's feisty. And the main character Don Jose, you know, it's it's narrated through him, but he's, he he you can see him unraveling mentally, and he knows he's unraveling because he's so in love with her because she's such a powerful and attractive um, character. So you can have these elements of of a of a dangerous uh, a dangerous female character who has edge and who has might and mm-hmm. isn't afraid to, to to cut a bit i mean there's literally a scene in the no- in the novel novella where she cuts an x into a woman's face and wow. you know and the author writes about you know she's bleeding out and there are flies getting into the wound i mean she she is no joke and it's so exciting to read and like you know and this is from the 1800s guys <laughs> like you you can you mm. can do all of this stuff at the same time but they just don't do it they, they, i don't think they have the uh, well when you're trying to decolonize your your curriculum you can't you can't use any uh, wisdom from from the uh, old white masters so no <laughs> well that's oppressive stuff but Going back to what you were saying earlier, Clifton, there's plenty of workout videos from Gal Gadot working out for Wonder Woman. She's Mm. there with a trainer, and she's doing uh, training after training. Uh, The German actress who played uh, Feyorel in the uh, Man of Steel, 
she's got video after video of her working her ass off uh, to get into shape. And, and I think she's, I think I thought Fiora was brilliant in Man of Steel. Mm. She was like a, a perfect like lieutenant to to Zod, uh, and and uh, she did come across as discount very Ursa. intimidating. Uh, no, it's not Ursula, not in this one. I know it's Fiora. Discount Ursa. Yeah, that's what I call it. But uh, you know when she's fighting the troops in in Smallville and just like knocking them out for fun, it's just like yeah, because this is what it would be like when you have that level of power. Uh, and so they they elevated her. They didn't lower everyone else to get to her level. They elevated her up to the level of the other uh, strong characters that made her a legitimate threat. Uh, and they gave her a nice little arc in the story with the general. Uh, and that was a nice little side story that they had going. Somebody said in the chat, somebody said, uh, Natalie Portman stood on a box here. 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, She's no, stood she on a box, she's got CGI arms, she's got a padded uh, fucking armor. She's done nothing. Well, hey, to be fair, short men not, in Hollywood also this, do that. They're not. That is the, true. Yes, they do. And that's forced perspective. And they're probably not How even in, in the same scene Tom together. Cruise that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be, could be two different. Yeah. <laughs> I had him in uh, mind, Mahler. It was 100% <laughs> about him. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just, they've done nothing. She's she's done nothing to, to, to kind of work out, earn that. Uh, you know, earn earn a bit of a, a stronger body. And she, like you said, she doesn't have to be big. No. She just has no. to, you know, to have a, the, a bit of tonal definition and to act, to act and, 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 and portray that strength. You know, if you can't show that strength, that German actress, she wasn't tall. She wasn't big. It was the way that she carried herself. And, and you saw when she was doing her training, uh, how she was made, you know, she was carrying herself by straight back, you know, very dominant body language positions, which gave that feeling of strength, the way that she spoke, that she she looked down at all the humans, you know, mm -hmm. General Zod wants that woman. It's a demand. It's yeah. not a request. Yes. You know, I'm yes. better than you. I'm stronger than all of you. you you're plebeian. You know, that woman, bring her. Yeah. You know, it's it, that's what makes a character exude that that strength and dominance. And that's how a, a, a you know, because women are smaller than men, muscular wise. Hello, uh, that's how you you use a smaller woman to 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 show yeah. that that dominant trait. Um, but you well, know, yeah, this is a super strong alien too. Yeah, <laughs> which helps. Well, that's out. just um, it though. But she's she's portraying it. She's no, yeah, you're right. She's showing uh, that I'm way stronger than you. You cannot, you know, touch me. Uh, and she's loving it. She's relishing the um, the dominance of her position. And there's also Alpha. other. Go ahead, want um, mechanical justifications as well, right? Because like it's, it just it helps with the like Buffy the Vampire Slayer is considered one of the most greatest pieces of content for pushing women forward. It's just like, well, yeah, mm -hmm. but she has superpowers. It was simple. It wasn't just the fact that she was, you know, that, that that's why that works, and lots of them work that way. The one you're mentioning with the um that general and and the lady with the German act, yeah, that was actually yeah, yeah. one of the that was one of the few things that we on EFAB actually liked about Man of Steel. We're not a fan of that movie, but we actually liked that as a payoff as well. It, it felt like stronger, and then for a lot of the reasons you were just bringing up. And that's the thing about Natalie Portman's Thor. It seems like we're going to get one conversation in this movie that'll last about half a minute to explain how she became Thor. She'll probably mm. say, mm. "You you abandoned Earth, and I was given the power because I actually like you know have gone." And there's probably going to be a second act low point. Where she she rips into him for being a coward or for mm. you know for abandoning the fight when the world needs him, and then he's going to get reinvigorated by the end and assist her against Gore, but she'll probably get the the last I, hit. I still say that she put the hammer together herself. Yeah. She scienced it together herself. She scienced that, it together, and that made oh her worthy. God. That's what I think. I Holy think exactly God. that. <laughs> That's How what she's gotten the hammer. Oh, you you that. left Milnia destroyed. We found the pieces, we put it back together, and because we put it back together, I put it back together. She probably uh, did it with I the was help worthy of Kat to, to wield it. And yeah, like what I'm getting at is just like they're not going to give us a compelling reason for why she would have been considered worthy. They're not going to do it. They're going to give us throwaway lines. And by the way, remember who, who destroyed Mjolnir in the first place? I, uh, uh, Kate Blanchett was probably mm. my favorite part of, of Thor Ragnarok because she was, she was chewing that scenery like she was starving to death. But, yeah. she, but, she, but she had her, but she combined this, I mean, she used all of her theater training. This is why actors should do theater. But she, com, you know, she had this big voice and this regality. Yeah. And, but, uh, you know, a little bit of sexuality as well. And she, and she combined all of that. 
and I'm like, I was like, she's having the time of her life playing mm -hmm. this role right now, and 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 taking up so much space. I'm like, I'm like, why did you, why did you kill Hella? You know, she has to come back. She's such a great character. Kate Blanchett is so great. You mm -hmm. know, like there, there's so many different ways that you can have. Um, uh, 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 women exude a sense of, of power and authority, but not abandon their their womanness. You know, it's um, I'm thinking I'm thinking of another. Um, uh, uh, they did a, a revival of a, a play called Fences on Broadway recently with Denzel Washington and Viola Davis, and a lot of people who saw that show and anyone who's seen Viola Davis on stage, mm -hmm. um, she is an absolute force of nature. She's tall. She's got a big physicality. She has a huge voice. And they said, look, it was basically Viola's show. Denzel Washington is one of the greatest actors who ever walked the face of the planet. But Viola Davis is just, she's a, she's a monster. She is an absolute force of nature. And so there's people out there that are like that. And we, and we as an audience member want to see that because it's so exciting to watch. We want to see it. You don't have to like, you know, you don't have to, uh, 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 just you do these poor substitutions for for male characters. There are there are people out there who can who can pull this off and make it really exciting and compelling to watch. You don't have to uh, uh, you know emasculate your male characters and and try to mm -hmm. falsely buff up your female characters. There's, there's ways to do this. It's been done before, and there are people out there capable of it. It's just <laughs> just stop. But that's stop why fucking I was saying perfect that's why casting is uh, Amanda Waller about the culture yeah, war now yeah. like more than anything else because i think that there's a reason to this it's not that it's not that they can't do it they're choosing not to do it and it's all very strategic as to why they're not choosing to do it anymore and i think that this is yeah, uh, I mean, times up men yes exactly like there's there's something going on behind the scenes and then going back to what you're saying they're doing the same thing with the feminine energy as well and it's all it's all part of an actual plan to, you know, to just control the masses more. And it's really funny because that's what you do through culture, right? You instill, you instill certain ideas into the new generations. This is what your role is now. This is what your role is now kind of thing. And um, just to, uh, to bolster what Clifton was saying as well about um, Hella, her death wasn't exactly that satisfying. She ends up uh, walking into Serta to the point of being shocked that her attacks aren't working, and then she just dies. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm, and if she yeah. would have gotten back and attacked Thor and everybody, she would have killed everybody, by the way. Like, That's the, the thing. Like, it's, 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 she'd already beaten Thor in a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, well, She beat a lot of them. Uh, and, and that's the thing they, they establish her to be incredibly powerful to the point that odin like feared her power and then they, they bring her in and they're like well we gotta get rid of her this movie too and it's like uh that might be difficult because imagine imagine gore is going to be like an actual interesting and well-written person him clashing with hella could be really interesting yeah well mm. i feel like i feel like mm. the point and th th that was mm. another thing that irritated me because i when i was reading god butcher i said this is a a, a genuinely terrifying character and I mean, it's it's so violent. I mean, he's he's literally butchering these gods, and they're like, "Who is doing this?" And I'm like, "Okay, but I don't. I want to see a movie where we focus on that, and mm -hmm. you know, the, the the horror and the stakes and the urgency of of solving that problem. But this guy is killing gods. Um, I don't want to see a movie where I mean, this this is like a uh, sort of a rom com shoehorned into uh, a, yes. a Thor film, and that's I don't want to see Gore the butcher, the god butcher, wasted um, in, in in this movie. It will be. Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. I know, I know. And he it's will Christian be. Bale too. I mean, it's gonna be such and a Christian waste. Christian Bale, I know he's so great. It's, it's it's so crazy, and I think the the other part of this trailer and these movies now that I have a huge problem with is I think like the overuse of CG is just completely thrown me off. Now I'm just like. Do we have any sets? Like, is anything real anymore in any of these? That's why I kind of like have more of an appreciation now for the Batman because the Batman was an actual movie where you're like, okay, there's sets, there's choreography, there's like certain things going on here. Wasn't all of this is basically a green screen? And I'm like, is there anything real in this? I, I don't know. It just seems so hollow. Just, uh, just the muscles on Natalie Portman. <laughs> The only real thing. There That's is. the only the real thing. Def yeah. Definitely not his grapes, right? Oh, God. There is something about CGI that I think has a very alienating effect um, on on the audience. Because, I mean, you know that what you're watching isn't isn't real. And it mm -hmm. and it and it it. It separates you from the experience uh, of being in the story. I mean, that, that's why I mean, I see you watch, uh, you know, Empire Strikes Back, and that still holds up in a lot of yes. ways. Yes. Um, but, you know, these newer films, uh, it's just, 
you know you're watching a, a, a computer simulation and you and mm. it's, it's, it makes it difficult for you as an audience member to really immerse yourself in the world that you're watching you know i would probably want to push that it's just got to be about execution because there are animated films that we are all aware watching them yeah. but this is entirely made up but they can be incredibly immersive and i well, have to assume it's about style and execution more so than anything and mm -hmm. lately marvel has been piss poor at its integrating uh cg with real actors i don't know what's going I'm, on i assume it's because they get rushed on everything but mm -hmm. if I'm watching an animated film, I know I'm, I know going in, I'm watching an animated film. Well, you know, but Mahler, you're right though in the sense that like I, I'm, I, I just think that Marvel's using really cheap CG, uh, shitty CG, whereas in like I mean we have a, another movie to compare this with that that's basically all CG and it's and it's Avatar I'm, and and Avatar like looks pretty decent like the CG I mean give it to, give it up to James Cameron right like he knows what right. he's doing but this looks just so cheap and like just I don't know there's something about it that just really yeah. doesn't. It's not good, going. Well. It's a good example because Avatar is another film that's gonna have real people in it, but it's mm -hmm. mainly going to be animated. Yeah. Most of all of it is fake, as in, yeah. well, fake in the sense that they've taken a real set with real people in it doing things, but they've, you know, given that's it a right. sheen of, of CG on top, and it's gonna be so well integrated that it's probably not gonna be. It's gonna be hard to notice. There's been people posting all kinds of things about different shots, arguing over whether or not it's practical. And it's like, that's probably the best thing you could do as a CGI artist, have people argue that your work is real. You're like, hell yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it would be fun to see that. Marvel, though, uh, people are comparing it to like Spy Kids 3D. Uh, yes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Oh my um, God. And yeah, the, this trailer and She Hulk coming out so close to each other, it's so clear. It's like, you guys are pushing it. You're mm. really fucking pushing it. The at this She point. Hulk, the She Hulk trailer. Oh. I just. It was Ooh. so egregious. It was so egregious. Yeah. It was terrible. But I mean, yeah, I mean, look, uh, I mean, I thought the, to be honest with you, I did think the, wherever is Zeus, let's just call this Olympus, because this is where Zeus is. So let's just call this Olympus. Mm -hmm. I think that looks beautiful. I think that, that mm -hmm. looks really good. But then you just go here and behind it looks trash. Um, have you got, I think it's near the end of the trailer, the shot with Thor is in the black and white world where he's like firing a lightning strike from mm -hmm. his hammer. It looks so fake. So fake. Yeah, like not... so oh, yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right there. It's this somewhere. Oh. Yeah. I'm not, well, that one looks fake too, but there's a bit before that, I think. Well, there's, well, there's Natalie Portman here. Go back like 10 seconds because there's a couple of shots of them on that planet you have something worth fighting for god that looks so fake uh that was the fakest part yeah it must be a bit earlier because it's like he fires oh here i got i think you got it i think you got it guy. well that's on the planet of the black and white you never forget your first so it's kind of around there I can grab the trailer. I'll, I'll find it. Yeah, There's find the, find the uh, time index. Oh, here we go. Is this? Here we go. Here we go. Thank oh God! See, it looks. Oof! It looks terrible. Yeah, Olympus will likely look a lot better. Yeah, than that that planet. Wait, is is this is this guy? What was his name again? Christian Bale's character. Gore. God. Batman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gore, the God is, Butcher, is, or NPC Man. Is Gore going to kill Kang Valkyrie? I think I might be down for that. That's fine. Well, that's I don't, I don't know why I, you'd ever I, think they would kill Valkyrie. Yeah. <laughs> why in the world do you think they would kill Valkyrie? They... I'm just saying. <laughs> You can't. Yeah, you, you, better, you better not kill the black night. woman. You better not yeah, kill the exactly. black woman. I was, I was gonna say they legit would get in trouble if they killed her off. I think they, yes. they saving, to, uh... she's saving Thor right now. Like ah, uh, she's saving Thor. Okay. Thor. Wait, uh, what... woman. And, 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 oh my god. And as far as Olympus is concerned, they're setting that up to make him a big fucking joke, and Gore's gonna kill all of them. Yeah, he's. Gonna oh yeah, kill yeah, them yeah, all yeah. Probably. He's going to. And yeah, we'll he's going to like three gods get killed. We'll see. You know, Zeus. Zeus looks like he's going to be a little bit incompetent, and then he's going to get killed. He's mm -hmm. already fat Zeus. Did you notice? It's like yeah. Russell Crowe's got like this dad bod. It's like, what? How does oh. Zeus look like a. F Never mind. It's just uh, Zeus. Who cares? As one, 135 is actually the one I was looking for, I think. Just after yeah. a Zeus shot. Oh, that, there. Yeah, there it yeah. is. This, like, look that, at that. Dude, that looks wow. like uh, the cover of a notebook, like that you take to school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
that looks like a Photoshop job so, that I did. The um the world they're on having this fight, like freaking and me and I were talking about it. It's like it's so bad that I was I was theorizing like maybe they're not on this world. And maybe this is just trailer bait, and that they they consider it a spoiler for whatever they're actually on or something. Because yeah. that's how bad it looks. Like this movie's been done too. Like this isn't like oh we're still working on it, dude. This thing was oh, it's done. It's been done for a while. Yeah. Mm. This has been done for a while. Yeah. This was filmed in 2020. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think we'll get lucky enough for Gore to kill Valkyrie. <laughs> I don't think that's going <laughs> to happen. Has there been reshoots of this one too, like Doctor yeah. Strange? Uh, uh, you know, on this one, I haven't heard, but I, I heard that there's reshoots on everything, but not to Doctor Strange level, no. No. Okay. Which was practically reshot entirely. I mean, eighty percent, almost your entire. That's film. a lot. <laughs> someone, someone said Pierre Chan does a better Photoshop than this. He does. <laughs> does. I know, yeah. He does. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, if he gave that to Gary, Gary probably said it's a bit of a disappointing thumbnail. This uh, Perry, but you know, you tried. I, I'll you go. <laughs> Try again, pal. Um, excuse me. Um, oh, this, this is this is a reaction. To him saying he knows down to the fucking day since he yeah. lost data, right? Her arms uh, are as real as her hair. By the way, that this that's such a cuck line too, like that he knows like to the minute of like how long she like they haven't seen each other, and it's like, oh my god, like what it's been like five, five days. It's like, dude, guys don't do that. No, okay? we don't. No, <laughs> guys, I mean, the, guys is, don't do that. Which, to be fair, I mean that that is why it's funny, but it's all you know, and, it, and it, it's a it's a little character moment of how much he's really into her. But you know, but in terms of within the context of everything else, it's like, all right, we but we, we it, get it. Doesn't it. line up with yeah, anything yeah. else. He doesn't talk about her at all. Yeah. I know. <laughs> And it he, would he's be funny if... once since since he split up with her. Well, didn't yeah. well, didn't uh, did, did, didn't in the original no film point. like it, it, he was only on Earth for like a few days, and all of a sudden he's madly yes. madly in love with this with this Earth woman, even though there's like tons ah, of hot Asgardian though, chicks. Isn't it? Well, that's in the thing: movies, will... people fall in love in a day anyway. It's, so. it's yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a movie thing. They did. They the whole reason she existed in those films was a movie thing. You got to give him a love interest, and then they yeah. like. They had all the awkward shit happen behind the scenes in relation to what Natalie Portman wanted, and they were just like, well, let's just boot her out, whatever. And then you have awkward lines like, oh, Jane dumped you. And he's like, I didn't. That she, that, it was a mutual dumping. And you're like, oh, yeah. well, that's the end of Jane then. But now they but changed their minds. <laughs> Exactly, but that's the thing. Like, it's like it would be funny if it was like one line in 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 like one movie once in a while. It's like every other line is like, "Let me put you down and make you into a cock and a little bitch." Like mm -hmm. every single line. It's like it's not funny anymore when I, it's like it's it's overused, and I just don't get the humor anymore. I was like funny the first five minutes. That's Why are you so afraid of strong women, Nina? <sighs> because I'm sick of being one, and it's just you know, it's just. Hiring. You don't want to see yourself mm. in the movies anymore. No, <laughs> I don't want to see myself in a movie. I want to. I want to see the damsel in distress being rescued by a dude that's like hot and amazing, like Thor. Like, look at him. He's a fucking god. And oh, he's... that's James Bond. Oh. oh, never mind. Yeah, they have. Um, you get like several points in this trailer where he's like, "Man, you're so impressive, man." That scene where you just did the thing with uh, the hammer, that was amazing. She's like, "You'll like her." Remember your first fight? I was confused by that. Are they saying that was her first fight? In no, yes. The, yes, and that's my and, first bad guy. Mm -hmm. And Forget. his first love, because that's why he's saying like, "You never, you never." No, I know about that. I, I just mean. By saying that's her first fight, it's like, oh god, is she just gonna be amazing at being Thor from the yeah. moment she? Yes. Oh god, no. Yep. Well, he no. just said that. Oh, I'm so impressed. Cause well, I'm no. just gonna stand here and validate you, Jane. You, because you need validation, and the audience needs to be told about how great you are. How oh, how amazing was the Scarlet Scarab when her yeah. body was taken over by a fertility goddess who obviously fights bad guys too? So, like, really good. Uh, are you an Egyptian superhero? Uh huh. Hey, you know what, Gary? She got her own costume. Moon Knight gets her own costume. Ethan Hawke didn't get his own costume when he was the Avatar for Amit. What about that? He got sandals. Yeah, he got, he got glass, glass sandals. sandals. That they never old, explained. Old what the fuck was up with that? <laughs> yeah. Why did he put they glass in his it. fucking shoes? Like they never explained. I thought it was to like stay awake and keep the other personalities at bay or something. I was thinking all kinds of stuff. And they're like, nah. I thought he was just a sadist, sadist, but I mean, that might, that might maybe, maybe that that was that he's like a, his soul should because remember he's he's to be put to 
in hell or whatever. He's to be condemned because he's he's a bad man. It's his pe- it's penance. Says. So it's kind of a spin on penance, which is uh, maybe be bombed the, from uh, civil the, war because uh, he blew you know up the, a... the um the leak plot for this is is that it's him, it's Thor, Kang, Valkyrie, and Jane go on a merry adventure together. Oh God! So Taika Waititi put they're his threesome in the movie. We're gonna, we're movie. gonna get a black a Black Panther here. We're gonna get a, a man dragged around by two women. Oh my God! That that. Somebody screen Gary's cap that. mute. Screen. Yeah, look at look <laughs> at her Gary, face. That's so. That's so. That's exactly what me. her can face. Can you hear me? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can hear me just okay. fine. I can, I can, somebody screen cap fucking Tessa Thompson's face on that one. That is so fucking perfect. That's great. I will say, right. Chris Hemsworth probably looks the best that I've seen in any of these films. Yeah. In terms of his physique. Yeah. Look at that fucking arm. Look at his <laughs> arms. Yeah, yeah. That horseshoe. Real arm. Them gains, bro. So I want to see like the female be carried in those arms. But, like why can't the girls work out? I, I uh, I've had people actually what call me out. For, uh, I don't know. He I think he's got an audio issues. He's so Bye, traumatized. Ed. All right, we don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he'll be back. Uh, but yeah, like uh, yeah, I think the women should work out as hard as the men. I absolutely. I can't. Uh, I can't just, what was that? If there's an echo. If you can there's an echo, but we can hear you. You got a poopy mic. Poopy. 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 I can't hear anyone. My poopy mouth. Poopy. We can hear you fine. That's. I don't know what's going on here. Dude, that's the one thing I'll give StreamYards on, on EFAP. If, if my computer fucks up, it fucks up for everyone, you know, because I'm the host or whatever. But here, the stream continues. I can't hear, I can't hear, I can't hear any of you. Even if the host can't hear anything. <laughs> You you can uh, I think you can restart your computer, and the stream will be fine. I've done it for. Yeah, it's, I, I think that's a pretty good feature. Yeah. Let me unplug. Uh, my although I'm looking into other things. Oh, now you're back again. Hello. Did you plug back in? in? Did you Weird. plug in your headphones? I think my headphones had just slipped out. They got head. unplugged. It was like yeah, it was a little unplugged. Excuse me, sir. Is your machine plugged in? He's now. It wasn't fully in. That's what she said. I t- oh wow. God. Now I rammed it right into the hilt. Now Nina. Oh, you can't say that on live television. What? Right into the hilt. Balls deep. Great, hey, Steve. Thor. We, they, they're using Sweet Child of Mine, so that that means the film's good, right? It's it, the Guns and Roses. Remember the Guns and Roses? They were cool. Sweet Child of Mine. That's the, the only song amazing. I know. Guns and Roses. I don't even know if it, Sweet Child of Mine. It's just like Odin's dead, so I don't think it's not going to be about him. Like, what? What are we? Who's child? <laughs> like, but is the, it getting the, relevant the, to the film at all? But the beginning, the whole, the whole beginning bit didn't make any sense because when thing would you Taika Waititi is doing the story, he says, "This is the story of Thor Odinson." And how he did da 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 da, da and and he, how he was that he reclaimed the mantle or whatever of thought. Not or a mantle. He, I know. Well, but what, let, let let's just do the exact wording because I don't want to. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Before you, I'm just oh, gonna shoot. say that I'm gonna like Tourette's every time somebody says it's the mantle, it's just gonna come out. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say really quickly uh, b- before you changed the uh, the 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 screen. Oh, the image. That, well, it just this is a this is a very much uh, a generational joke, but to me, she looked like Mumra the Ever Living in that in that clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I get that joke. It's yeah. a it's a Thundercats, Thundercats reference. Ah, Thunder, right. Let's what's the let's get the exact wordage. Kids, get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space Viking. Thor Odinson. So there you go. The, the, the space Viking Thor, Thor Odinson, because that's his name. Oh, you mean he like was the... an ordinary man? He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. He went from dead bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. He is Thor. You can't claim the title of yeah, Thor. He stupid. is Thor. They've or in in that section of sentences they've established there are two Thors. One is the guy's name, the other one's a mantle that people pick up. It's like that's not confusing at all. No. 
it sounds almost like you made that up. <laughs> it doesn't sound all right, but okay. Also, I There's... guess it sounds like he's telling the story after the fact. So this has all happened already. And yes. like, I guess the world is fine. So there's no stakes. Dead. There's no stakes in this movie because everything's Chris fine. He said like you went, oh, I guess not or whatever. It's like, wait, so this isn't going to happen at the beginning then? Or do you think it's going to be different for the film? Like that line is in the trailer only. Oh, yeah, that might hey, be. Hey, look, actually, actually, so, my bad. What's so confusing? He's just, he's just, he's just Thor, Thor Odinson. <laughs> Thor, Thor. There was a there was a really great uh, Reddit comment back when they introduced um, female Thor that kind of took off and explained everything. And it's like, look, you know, if you know when uh, when uh, when Bucky takes Captain America's shield and calls himself Captain America, he, the Captain America is the title, but it, it, you know he, he doesn't become Steve Rogers. When you you know Thor is not a title like that. You know, it's 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 mm. Thor is who Thor is. It's Thor, son of Odin, and um, you know it's yeah. just it, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's like Jane says in the chat, it's not like Black Panther. Black Panther is the, you know, the title. It's not T'Challa. You're not going to call it like uh, But that's like but that's like saying T'Challa took the uh T'Challa earned the right to be T'Challa. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. No, if that's his be name. Like, she has to be called Thor because she's got the power that Odin has as decreed would would the flowed through. It's like, "All right, shut up. Just give her a different name and have that same mechanic in line that sure. mechanic does not force her to have to be called thor in fact it just makes us all very confused because that means he named his son after the power that he imbues people via mjolnir is that what you're saying why wouldn't he it, 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 to give you an idea it's like there's an iron man suit that you can provide to any child of yours and eventually you have a kid and you're like let's just call the kid iron man it's like <laughs> why would you why would you do that that's that's weird oh it is like why news we... iron uh man becomes iron man uh, following that logic, wouldn't it then be called like? Wouldn't she be then maybe called like Jane Odinson then? Because then it's his power, like it's Odin's look, power, right? Yeah, but no, Odinson means for, son of Odin. Look right. For a cool Norse character that can at least vaguely match this, or a cool Norse name that you can Odin use. Odin's daughter. Just find something. You, you, why do you need to do this? We know why they need to do this, but why do you I've need to do this? One. Why don't you just call a Valkyrie? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, Valkyrie would have been. Man, nice. you're actually right. If if Valkyrie, as she exists now, didn't exist, and then Jane arrives into the story and calls herself Valkyrie, I would have a lot less confusion about this. But I'd mm. still be annoyed that she's been given this power of worthiness based on what exactly. And I guess we'll find out. Oh, we'll find out. Doesn't make it. The whole thing never made any sense when it when it happened in the comics. Anyway, this whole debate was happening then as well. Thor's it's Thor. So, um, Jane can't be Thor. Jane's Jane. So sad as well because like so many of these uh, of the female characters have been introduced, they just don't earn the power, and they don't always have to. I think we talked about this on either Open Bar or the last uh, Real BBC. It's not like it's a required archetype that you earn your power, but like all of the new ones. You remember how did um how did she get her power in in Moon Knight? It's like well, she was in the right place, at the right time, and uh, Tarouet was like, I need someone to take the power to help out Moon Knight, so I guess it's you. It's like, okay, how did Captain Marvel get her power? It's like, she fell into some goo. How did, how did Rambo get her power? It's like, she walked through a special wall. It had, she thought it would kill her. It's like a validation, these, these, a validation wall. Validation wall. These, these power origins suck. You know like, what I... What I was just thinking, what would have been sort of interesting to watch is if... And, you know, I, I don't know if you can fault... Um, the filmmakers for this but you know if you wanted to tell if you wanted to tell a really deep um and endearing love story between jane foster and thor you know that that spanned multiple movies what if what makes her worthy of being able to lift mjolnir is her is her love for thor in some way like that there's some situation where thor is in huge huge trouble and and she so and she shows all this like you know maybe courage uh, uh the, the the willingness to sacrifice herself in some way and then that is what makes her worthy and that that would be something that's very human that we could uh, latch on to in terms of just these big overarching um themes uh, about you know i guess humanity that that that, that would be um, compelling and you could put but that you in know there, but... why they can't do it already clifton well it, it, it would have to make her show vulnerability 
Well, and, and it would, and it would also, uh, and yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. We know this is impossible, but if I could add to what you said, like I, I would love to see that she got inspired by him. She saw his heroic act. She saw the fact yeah. that he would he would put away time of hanging out with her to help people in different areas of the earth, and she would at first maybe have an argument being like, "God, you don't care about me," but then she eventually realizes like, "No, this guy puts the livelihoods of like the 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 many above his interactions with me," and that's really admirable and. You know, she goes on a little little journey of her own. Because this is the thing, to do this properly, if we actually wanted to get her to the point where she's worthy of wielding that fucking hammer, it's going to take a while. Honestly, it has yeah. to take a while. And then, it has you to know, be meaningful. Look how long it took Cap. You could, have had, yeah. you could have had Jane fix the hammer, then you could have had Jane trying to lift the hammer, can't lift it, at, you know, can't budge it at all. Uh, then she goes on the journey with Thor, who's got both... Uh, uh, Milnier and um, Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker. Uh, and then, you know, she's helping him as a god, him as a god. She's she's showing incredible braveness to, to, to kind yeah. of fight by his side. And then at one point, Thor's incapacitated. The hammer, Milnier's down. She tries to pick up Milnier. It just wibbles a bit. Just a bit like Cap did in, in, in Age of Ultron, just a bit, but she still can't lift the hammer. Then you then move into the third act where the, the major final confrontation happens, uh, and then she gets the ability to pick up the hammer because she's proven herself worthy right. of the journey. And it and it is an actual arc of being able to, to pick up Milnier, and it's because and you you could develop the love, you know, the reconnection between the characters, them falling back in love with each other, mm -hmm. her, her sort of understanding her humanity versus his godhood. Uh, and those are things which are really interesting to play on. Uh, but no, it's this mm -hmm. is, um, oh my God, what's it been like three or four years or something? I, I mean, I don't know. I just... Well, and if, you, and if you built something like that, you know, that, that climactic moment of her lifting up the hammer, everybody in that theater would be on their feet. Just, yeah. Just oh, cheering yeah, and like, being like, oh, my God, this is amazing. The, and the lightning comes down and she gets the costume and yeah. then people would just be like, holy shit. And she could be like, holy shit. You know, then, boom, really go oh, for yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Everyone would um, be... Someone uh, in chat just highlighted as well, if you remember, he destroys the Bifrost in the first Thor, and he realizes that doing that separates himself from Jane. You'll never be able to see her again. That's like part of a sacrifice he makes in that. You can tie that into her understanding of sacrifices. And as, as you were just saying, I might mm. even suggest a tweak where in the third act, she realizes the only way she can save Thor is lifting that hammer, still can't, and gets killed, or rather hurt incredibly badly, yeah. ends up in hospital. You know, the day is saved by some other person, some other nature of events. And Thor's just in the hospital realizing, like, I never should have fucking brought you. That was a huge mistake. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And, like, I wish there's something I could do to help you. And she becomes worthy because it's proven, even without any power, she does everything she can to, to, to help. Mm -hmm. And look what it cost her. And then the hammer could come to her, or something can come to her. You know, and you could have the first film for her story ending with, like, a tease that a lightning strike hits the hospital or something like that. And you're like, oh, yeah, shit, he what leaves does that mean? Milnir at this, you know, yeah. near her or something. And he leaves, and then you know, you, you it finishes, and then maybe mid cut scene, you just kind of get this panoramic of the hospital, and then suddenly you just see a literally like smash through the roof of the hospital, and boom, where her her room was, and then everyone's like, oh shit, and like oh, it's so much more endearing when they earn the fuck out of being the person that should have the power they, they end up with instead mm. of just, I got given it. I'm really good with it. Also, you suck. You're like, but I, but I, okay. I personally think though, if you're going to do a film like this with a reconnection of love, then I think you need to have um, a parity moment between the God and the human. So I think you need to have that uh, at, at the end, them fighting, literally fighting as lovers, fighting as one, fighting as a, a unity. Now her with Milnir, him with Stormbreaker. Um, like the literally the embodiment of 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 uh, Thor in one, uh, as they're literally just kind of operating off each other instinctually. You know, he's setting her up. She does that, which sets him up for this, and they just yeah, yeah. start annihilating. You know, the big villain. It really gives that kind of connection between the two because the two are legitimately connected. Earn, earn. What's wrong with earning 
yeah. the fucking position now. No one earns their position. Kate, Kate, thing well, with Jiggy in, in Hawkeye. What did we hear about her? She was already made. Some people call me the best arch in the world. Oh, great. Well, that's a wonderful arc that you've just gone through because you're now the bestest ever. Because what you're dealing with is people who have a <laughs> an ideological worldview in which they see men as already uh, as powerful by default mm -hmm. and who never have had to earn anything. And meanwhile, the women are just existing secretly powerful but being overshadowed and oppressed by these men. I think, <laughs> I, think I think the idea that the underlying theme is that, um, you know, th these women were always great. They just needed a chance to shine and for, you know, but the men had to get out of the way uh, at first. And this is sort of a digression, yeah. but the, someone in the chat uh, mentioned this. Do you, th does anyone, does anyone want to see the Beta Ray Bill saga uh, created by these people in this universe. I certainly don't. Beta Ray Bill is one of my favorite characters that I've ever seen. And he's such this, he's this great example of just courage and virtue and nobility, um, you know, which is, you know, sort of, and I'll say like maybe traditionally masculine virtues is heroism. Um, but the, that there's no space for that in, in the current, um, I say a lot in the current entertainment industry as a whole, really, uh, but especially not in the MCU. Um, I, I just, I wouldn't trust them to do it. And, um, the, the, no, I, my, I, my, I want Tristan to do any story at the minute. None. Um, you know, if, if, if DC announced tomorrow, Warner announced tomorrow, we're going to do the Nightfall saga, I'd be petrified. I don't mean to uh, go back to what we were just talking about. It's just, it seems so fucking definitive to me as an actual point of comparison. I'm assuming you guys remember Iron Man, because everyone really likes that movie. Uh, yeah. Do you remember how he's pretty powerful throughout the film, especially compared to the average person? But when we get to the third <laughs> act... His suit is at nineteen percent power against like a souped up charged Iron Man. When he's like he tries to take him up into the atmosphere, um he's at ten percent, I think. And then right at the end he hits like literally one percent power and he even sacrifices presumably himself when he activates the arc reactor. What I'm trying to argue is that in the third act, he is completely like pampered and crippled in all the different ways that we wouldn't want him to be when mm. fighting someone who needs to save the world. And yet he comes through, he has to he has to earn the fuck out of it. Remember there's that um the part where he grabs like a, a car with a family in it and the woman is so terrified who's driving she drives into him after he saves her um mm. and he ends up like flying underneath the car yep. he's struggling yep. throughout the whole thing compare that to a little film called captain marvel where <laughs> her, her third act she gets given the power of flight out of nowhere she just suddenly can now fly she kills everything with ease and her antagonist in the film says fight me fairly and she says no like, doesn't she, um, when she's smashing through the ships, killing them, isn't she like cheering and stuff? Yeah, or whooping saying, and she says, woo, which is really, I weird. like this. I would say, um, <laughs> if, even going on top of, you know, this goes back into this idea of telling a long arc story. Um, one of the things I loved, uh, you know, I, I ugly cried uh, a lot during Endgame, um, even though I was like, this isn't really the best movie ever. But, you know, it's, it's still satisfying to me. But, you know, that when when Tony Stark sacrifices himself, that is the completion of an arc which began. If you, if you go back and watch uh, Joss Whedon's first Avengers movie and uh, there, there's that there's the beef that's sewn in between who Steve Rogers is. And who uh, and who Tony Stark is, and Steve Rogers is like, you will never make that big play. You you will never. We, we like we've we've seen Steve Rogers throw himself on a grenade to save other people, and meanwhile Tony Stark is a selfish asshole, and who doesn't care about anybody. And so when he so when he finally makes the ultimate sacrifice, twelve years later, it's such an emotionally satisfying moment. It's like where where are those kinds of epic? You know storytelling things you, you could have had that in, in in thor maybe between you know like we were saying before sort of you know daydreaming about what could happen between uh, um, jane and um and thor but you know it's possible but they just they don't have the ingenuity in it, it seems to or they, maybe they, did, they didn't think it through enough you're not Absolutely one wrong. you're not the um, one to make the sacrifice play exactly. i mean exactly. I, I, well, like that's a consistent element as well because he ends up in Avengers uh, taking the nuke out himself, presuming that he's going to die. Even uh, yeah. I think yeah. Jarvis tells him like he's probably going to die doing this. Yep, yep. Mm, and so the Avengers is a pretty neat movie. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, what they? I wish they would have kind of done more with the repercussions of him seeing like space and aliens for the first mm. time and surviving hey, that. Gary, blame Iron Man, Man Three, okay? Yep. I hated that fucking movie so much. I fucking hate that movie too. <laughs> God, so if, if, you, if you watched it today, you'd probably think it a masterpiece compared yeah, to... Yeah, it's probably, like, so much now. better now. Nah, uh, no, 
I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this Clifton guy. We should have Mom Muller. <laughs> I feel well, like I got so mad during that movie. I, I can't, Matt, Matt Muller. I can't even. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. They, that's they just when, that's that's when the MCU started. Like that's it's very early when the seeds were getting planted. Uh, all that shit was starting. Uh, um, because... going back to like Thor's relationship with Thor. Um, <laughs> Thor. Well, okay, so you can't really have uh, hetero relationships anymore uh, all that much. So at this point, I just actually wouldn't be surprised if the title of the movie is about like, you know, because it's love and thunder. So I wouldn't be surprised if thunder is actually Jane Thor and love is Valkyrie. And then they're getting together as like a lesbian couple or something like that. Cause it's just like, that's, that's like what we're being told now and sold to every five minutes. It's like, okay, you know, hetero relationships are out. Men are bad. Uh, we need more lesbians, more scissoring. Oh, there's a I movie. See, I say that, to, that I Chris, said that. Chris Gore showed me a trailer of called, you don't want to see it called bros. And it's going to be like a, a a gay sitcom for straight people, and at the end, they the, the tagline is "straight people." They had a good run. Yes, wow. I, I saw that trailer. It I was say, fucking terrible. I, I say now that that gay is the new cliche, you know. And the, but I will say that there was one thing I did laugh at just now watching the trailer again is that when um when uh when thor's uh you know all his clothes are removed there's there's like one guy there who faints with all the rest of the women i thought that was pretty funny i mean it's yeah, like it's funny. like it's subtle and like and like and, and, and you know you don't unless both you're looking for it you don't see it but it's pretty it was, I, I laughed at that both guards faint oh, they yeah the both this guards is, this faint. Is yeah. oh, that's echo. hilarious this is echo from the comic books who's based on gina kershaw would you rather have seen something like this than what you got in the disney series I mean, I'm not saying it would have been. Why even ask better, that question? But Gary. a little more pleasant <laughs> on the <laughs> eyes. I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, Echo does not exist to be easy on the eyes for you, Gary. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Gina Krishan does. Watch Bound. See, folks, this is what happens when you like, let game, Gamer Gates is in. Hmm. All right, person. Pipeline. It's the all right <laughs> pipeline. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I now platform white supremacists. Did you know that, Clifton? I, well, hey, I platform white supremacists. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually well, addressed that just, just real quick after what you said about the pipeline. Uh, we got a super chat the other day that said they were from Hassan. They were a Hassan viewer, and they started to watch EFAP and spread through the things. And it's like, wait, so Hassan is a part of the alt-right pipeline? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. He's the uh, oh, recruiter. His takes are so bad, it's making people alt-right. Well, the funny, I mean, yeah. the funny thing is, I mean, I've said this for years, but, you know, the, the alt-right, uh, you know, whatever that is, and the, and the progressive left are two sides of the same coin. The only difference yes. is that it appears that the alt-right views uh, white people as the victims, while the progressive left views everyone else who is not white uh, as the victims. But they both, they both view uh, white people as inherently superior to yes. everybody else. It is a yes. uh, progressivism is a white supremacist ideology. Oh. And, we we uh, liken it to a circle. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the two points right? that meet there are, are the alt left and the alt right. They're the same. As you mean the horseshoe theory, right? That's what that is. Yeah, the yeah the horseshoe. Yeah. <laughs> the, but they they got to horseshoe is not quite a circle. Horseshoe is not a circle. No, it's a circle because the, the horseshoe they're separated and <laughs> a circle they're together because this motherfucker don't know shapes. <laughs> <laughs> shapes are hard. <laughs> Shapes are hard for people. Shapes are racist, bro. I mean, look at look at your head. Look at your headphones. That's a that's it's, a horseshoe. As that that's yeah, a frame of reference connected. for you. They're not connected. You see, it's look, like that's that. a horse it's as if they come. It's like a no, so headphones. If they're not the idea, on, the they idea touch. is that the idea is, is that the they're same. not the, the same point. They have the same results. They're on a scale, and it's in terms of so one axis is how racist. The other axis is like politically where you are, and when they go from. <laughs> Right wing and hyper racist, all the way up to super progressive, and all the way back down to hyper racist again. Uh, Ryan Long is a of very spectrum. good uh, skit on that. Yes, it's really fucking funny. Like when they're like, "We've got to separate out blacks and whites because mm. uh, you know black people deserve to have better places." To be uninterrupted in their happiness or something and it's like wow you know, there was yeah, a yep. <laughs> there was a really great um i forgot what, who the guy was but he went to a, he went to columbia university and started talking to the students there and the, these students were openly advocating for segregating people by race meanwhile just off campus 
this guy went and talked to regular black people and they were like, what the fuck? But then he went down and, and spoke to, he went down to North Carolina and talked to a bona fide Klan member. And this dude was saying the same shit as these, as these progressive, you know, affluent, uh, mm. privileged uh, uh, white and some Asian uh, kids were saying. I mean, they, they don't know how racist they actually are. But, but the funny thing is, they, 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 it's benevolent racism. They're being racist on my behalf. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. They legit, um, there was a thing that got shut down by the police at one point, thank fuck, but it, I can't remember what city it was in. It was in America somewhere, unfortunately, because there's a lot of stuff happens there for this, but there was like an organization for some kind of progressive protest, and um, the only people who had to pay to get into the area were white people. They were like, if you're white, you have to pay, and they had problems with some people who they couldn't tell if they were white or not. <laughs> oh, it's no. like... well, there was the cafe as well. Remember the cafe that charged men more? Because they they yep. claimed you know the pay gap and it closed down 